can't believe we're doing it, but we're building an amplifier. Welcome back guys. How are you doing? I hope you're doing excellent today. I've often built projects on this show, namely guitars like this one. This was one of my recent builds, came out really, really nice, but I've never actually tackled something as complex as building an amplifier. So if you've been following along, uh, you know that I recently received a Stumac Princeton Reverb 65 kit which um, I'm planning on building. Yes, I am. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little apprehensive, insecure even. I don't know the first thing about reading schematics and, and all the mathematics involved uh, when it comes to electronics, but I do have confidence uh, in the booklet that was shipped with the kit that outlines all of the steps. I think I'm pretty handy with my hands and I follow instructions quite well, so I'm hoping that we can actually pull this off. I'm actually documenting it so you guys can make fun of me if I mess up. So today's video is going to be the first steps that are outlined in the booklet and I'm going to be following those steps to, to the T because I don't want to have any issues along the way and skip any steps that are critical. So I'm basically using the, the, the guideline, the booklet, as my uh, Bible basically for this build and hopefully it'll um, It'll ease me through it without any major mishaps. Now, I'm hoping I'm not gonna electrocute myself. <laughs> you can keep track of my hairstyle and see if it changes along the way in future videos. If it got curly all of a sudden, you know that something went wrong. But all joking aside, uh, you can kill yourself building these kits. So you gotta be extremely careful, especially once you start powering it up and testing things. So uh, when it gets to that point, I'm definitely gonna be extra careful. Full disclosure, I've never built an amp before. I'm partially colorblind, so working with the um, color system on some of these components is not easy for me. Some of those colors are, um, are, are not colorblind friendly colors. Um, so I'm gonna rely on my multimeter most of the time to make sure that I have the proper component by reading the values. And I will have somebody else double check my work just to make sure everything is in the proper place on the turret board once we get to that stage because it's easy to mess up. There's a lot of components there and you know it's easy for anyone to make a mistake. So we're gonna check our work twice and make sure everything is good before we actually start soldering everything in place. But for today's video, we're starting with pretty basic stuff. It's just really putting uh, a couple of pieces together within the chassis of the uh, unit and the casing of the amplifier. We're gonna jump right to it and get started because there's a lot of steps in this build. First thing we're gonna tackle is mounting the power cord clamp, which is pretty easy to do. You will need some tools to be able to do that namely either a screwdriver or a drill. We'll use a drill just to make things a little bit easier and quicker. For me. One more. Now you can see the inside of the cabinet here. It's nicely made. Everything's tacked down really nicely. Um, all the Tolex is nice. They have the, the washers around them. the screws there and everything's painted black. They did a good job. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so to be able to put in the power cord clamp, all it is is really just a plastic retainer. So you'll want to take out your kit, pull out the retainer, the plastic retainer, which is basically this guy. Nothing more complicated than that. And then we need a screw, a little screw like that. So what we need to do here, it says to drill a 5 64th pilot hole to mount the nylon cable clamp. And we're gonna locate it on this side about an inch from the back of this little post and about eight inches up. So, I mean, you don't have to be super anal about it, but if you wanna take a measurement, we'll do that. Eight inches up 
brings us to about here. Uh, it's funny because there's already um, some kind of a sticker here in this location which um, they could have put that in a different different spot, but it's there, so we're, we'll leave it there. All right, so eight inches up, it's about here. It's always a good idea to uh, drill a pilot hole before you start, because if you don't, you, what's most likely gonna happen is the pine will split. We should drill a 5 64th hole there so let's get the drill we only have to really go in about a quarter of an inch so we don't want to go right through the cabinet so i'm going to just put some tape on the edge of the drill bit just to mark the depth we don't want to overshoot it that should be good enough and uh, we'll just drill the hole here it might be hard to see We can just screw that in right there and we're good to go. That's all it takes. I'm not going to tighten it up very much at this point because, you know, we're going to be doing some other things to this. So we're going to have to loosen it up again. So for the time being, just leave it loose. We're going to move on to step number two, which requires a little bit of soldering. We're going to be soldering the speaker plug, which is this little guy here made of two parts two screws and to be able to do that we're going to need the wiring so the wiring comes in this bag this is the wire we need to use let's get started we have the little end of the jack that we're going to need to solder the wires to right here and these are pretty much touching the enclosure so i'm just going to bend these slightly so they're lifted off the enclosure because I don't want to get any solder stuck to the enclosure. I don't think that would be a good thing so that we can isolate any contact between the tabs and the actual enclosure there. So let me just pull that up slightly using either a, a screwdriver or a little plier. We're using a 40 watt soldering iron. Uh, I'm using my little octopus arms here to help me hold on to the piece that I'm going to be soldering the wire to. We have the white wire. I just push back the cloth a little bit so I can tin that before we actually attach it uh, to the lug that we have to um, solder it to. So the lug that we're going to be soldering it to is the outermost. The white wire goes on the outermost, the black wire goes on the bottom one. We want to do a clean job. We don't want to get solder all over the place. After the iron's warm, we're gonna take our core wire and we're just gonna tack it down according to the instructions. And then we'll reassemble the plug. Lightly tin these two portions. And you can also tin the wire, makes it easier. And we're gonna make sure the white wire is going to the center. So once everything is put together, soldered in place, and the case is closed, you should be able to then test to make sure that there's nothing touching the case. It's very tricky because there's not a lot of room in here, guys. So what you want to do is take your multimeter, put it to the setting that will allow you to check for continuity. So the outer lug is the white wire here. So and the center or the lower post here should be the black wire which is what we want to see but you don't want to have any type of beeping when you check the tip and the case there shouldn't be any beeping if there is it means there's something touching on the inside the shaft will normally beep because it's part of the enclosure but the tip shouldn't, all right? So if you're hearing beeping when you're touching the tip there, open it up, make sure nothing's touching the inside or you'll have issues. 
that's it for step number two. The next step in the process is to solder the speaker leads to the, to the speaker, which is quite simple. The white is going to the positive and the black is going to the negative. So we'll get the, the speaker and we'll wire that up. So it's gonna be the same procedure here, guys. We're just gonna tin the posts before we actually uh, solder anything to it, just to make sure we have a good connection. You have a choice of either using the leftmost one or the ones that are facing down. I'm gonna use the, the ones that are facing down. The speaker comes with this little tag, so I'm just gonna slip it under here just to make sure I don't get any solder accidentally on the speaker cone. That wouldn't be a good thing. Make sure the tip of your soldering iron is nice and clean and just drop a little bit of um, solder right here. Don't overdo it. And it always helps to do the same thing, tin your wires before you actually put them down. I like to slip the wire in the little hole there and then add a little bit of um, solder. Once it's cooled, just give it a little tug, make sure everything's really solid here. Um, and that's pretty much all it takes. The next step in the process is to mount the speaker inside the box. These shafts will be what is gonna be holding the speaker inside the box. So you're gonna wanna align those carefully and make sure that you're not ripping into the front of the speaker. Be very careful, I like to do this with the box lying on its face so I can have a good view of where these are going in. Because sometimes it's very tricky and you might actually think you're going inside the little holes here, but you're actually missing and tearing into the front of the speaker. You don't want to do that. The other thing you will be looking for most probably are the little bolts that attach to these screws here. They're not actually on the shaft as the instructions say. The instructions indicate that you should unscrew them at this point, but they're not actually on the shafts and they're not in the plastic bin as well with all the other hardware. They're actually in a little bag, at least mine were, and they were taped onto the inside box. So if you're not aware, uh, you may have thrown that box out with these little screws, hopefully not, but that's where the screws are. So when you mount the speaker, in there, just pay very close attention to make sure that the shafts are going within the holes and not ripping into the front. The next step is to actually put on the bolts on the shafts of the screws here, tighten everything up and making sure uh, everything is snug, but don't over tighten. And also make sure that you tighten the bolts in a cross pattern like this, not clockwise. It's uh, It just makes it less likely that you're gonna over tighten things and um, just warp the actual speaker housing here. So uh, take your time. Once it gets snug, a couple of small turns is all you really need. You don't need to over tighten it. And there you have a nicely mounted Jensen special design speaker inside the cabinet, uh, all ready to go. So one thing I wanted to mention that I noticed about the kit was that the screws that come with the case um, don't ship with these little washers. They actually just have the screws. And because the screws are chamfered, um, when you screw them in over and over again, loosen them and put them in, loosen them and put them in, eventually it'll split the wood because um, it acts as a wedge. So putting these little washers in place is a good idea. It's perhaps not um, what was shipped with the original 65 Princetons back in the day, but now that these are available and pretty inexpensive, you can get these anywhere. They're number eight, 
finishing washers. I got these uh, onward models here, but you can get them from a variety of different um, suppliers. And it's just a small investment to make, just to make your amp a little bit better. Step number five says that we need to install the face plate and back plate in the chassis. Uh, but step number six uh, calls for gluing up the tube placement chart in the inside of the cabinet. So I figured since we're working on the cabinet, now is a good time to actually glue the placement chart. And the reason why I put the panels back on is, is because I want to be able to see the placement chart when the panels are on. So I just wanted to see where they would actually line up. So I'll cut out and glue that placement chart um, about here so where I can see it without necessarily having to remove the panel. I think that would be the best location for it. So I'll cut that out and glue that in. And then I'll jump back to step number five, which calls for uh, installing the face plate and back plate in the chassis. There is a shot of the label on the inside of the cabinet. A thin layer of glue on the back of it is all you need. Now, some people might want to actually print out reproduction versions of the old Fender uh, labels, which you can do and uh, glue in place of this one. I like this one because it has all of the tube information as well as the one amp slow blow fuse information at the bottom. And I'm okay with keeping the Stumac version of this label. I think it looks cool. So the next step in the series is step number five, and we're gonna be installing the face plate and back plate on our chassis, which we have here, as you can see, it's quite naked at the moment. So we're gonna take the face plate and back plate and apply it to the chassis right here. And to hold that in place, we need a series of components that I've already pulled out of the plastic bin. And just to recap, you're going to need the 1MA pot, which is um, this one. The 1MA pot uh, is for the volume. And then we have a 250KA um, pot which will be for the base. We'll install both of these through the holes, uh, through the holes here, and that will act as um, just um, a method of holding the face plate in place while we work on other things. Uh, beyond that, we will also uh, install the back plate, and to hold that in place, we will need the two lug um, extension cab switch, which is this one, two lugs. There's only two posts here, as you can see. And then we're going to need the three lug ground switch, which is this one. You can see one lug here and two on the opposite end, as well as um, the spacers here. Um, this one is just for looks because the ground switch, according to the manual, are not needed on modern amplifiers. So basically, um, the three-pronged ground cord takes care of that. But in order to keep the look of the amp authentic, they're including this, even though it's just a dummy switch for the time being. So let's start with the front face plate. And I'll be working here so forgive my hands or arms if they get in the way. So let's start off with um, the appropriate uh, pot here. We'll use the one MA pot for the volume, which is going to be the first one. They don't really specify how to um, install, you know, the spacers and whatnot. I'm not really 100% sure, but I think it would be best to do it this way. So it doesn't scratch the face plate when we um, put it on there. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna finger tighten everything. And then eventually I'll just use my, uh, my tools to make sure it's nice and snug. Don't wanna over tighten anything at the very beginning, just in case we need to correct something, move something. All right, so according uh, to the manual, once again, the 250KA pot is for base. So we're gonna put that here and align everything as um, accurately as we can. 
Now, these steps are pretty much the, the easy baby steps. We're going to get to the complicated stuff later. But, you know, you got to do these steps first. You want to follow the instructions in order as much as possible. Okay, so volume is there. Things are working. You should install them with the lugs facing upward so that when it comes time to solder everything, you have easy access. So keep that in mind. That's why I'm just finger tightening everything for the time being. So this is pretty much all we need to do on this side for the moment. Let's flip over the chassis and work on the back. So here we have to install the ground on one side, which is here, and the speaker output uh, here. So let's start off with this guy. And they say to install it sideways. So I don't think it really matters which direction you're gonna put it in, as long as it's sideways, since this is a dummy component for the time being anyways. Again, finger tighten everything. So there's the ground switch. It seems to be working, even though it's dummy. And now the final component is this guy here. Remember, it's the two lug um, jack, not the three lug. There we go, it pushes through. And I'll tighten both of them up again. You want to make sure that it's um, enough thread is sticking out so that you can put in the spacer and uh, put everything properly. And then we'll tighten up the ground switch here. All right, good. There we go. So that was pretty easy. Wish the entire build was as easy as that. <laughs> but I have a feeling it's going to get a little bit more intense as we go on. So we can check off step number five. And I already completed uh, step number six when I had the, the case for the cabinet opened up. I actually installed the, replace, the replacement tube chart. So I already uh, checked that one off. So step number seven is um solder for rca plugs so let's get the plugs out and figure out how we can solder everything uh, so we have those plugs ready we have the wire here and we have the ends that we're going to need to install and according to the instructions we basically have the three foot length of wire here and we got to work on the end. So at the end of each piece, we need to pull out about three quarters of an inch, which is about that much of the shielding mesh away um, so that we can then strip the um, internal cloth, cloth shielding and insert the exposed wire into the RCA jack, which is this. So to be able to do that, I'm going to use an X-Acto here and attempt to do this while I'm recording. I think the best or easiest way is just to slide this in and um, you can actually just punch through very carefully so that you don't hurt yourself and just cut the shielding carefully so that you can wrap it around itself and use that as a braid. I don't, I don't know if there's an easier way. Perhaps there is. I don't know. With my limited experience, I'm going with this. So once you have that apart, you can peel it with your fingers. Like so. And then you can take all of that wire and then wrap it to make a braid as neat as you can. Not always easy, but something that looks like that. Then we can strip away this portion here, which is gonna end up within the RCA uh, jack, like, like so. If you have wire strippers like this, they help tremendously with the different sized gauges here. Um, they don't mention what the gauge is here, so I'm gonna have to take my best guess and I'll go with the wider one first. 
And if that doesn't work, we'll move to a smaller gauge. Uh, we can also use a little bit of the X-Acto if we have to, just to cut it loose without breaking the wires on the inside. There we go. Not always easy to do this, guys, especially when you're trying to film, but we're going to try. There we go. Okay. So we want to wrap these as tightly as we can. I don't know if it's actually going to be able to stick out the other end. We're going to try. So it should be something like this, I assume. There's the wire on the tip right there. It's going to be a little tricky to do it this way, but we're going to try our best. While we're waiting for the uh, 40 watt soldering iron to get warm, I use my trusty octopus uh, tool here to hold everything in place. So we're going to be soldering that little length of a wire that's sticking out at the top. You can hardly see it, but it's there. Um, we're going to solder that in place and then we're going to solder this wire to the outer shell of the RCA jack here. I don't really feel this is the best way to do a connection like this, but I guess this is how they did it in the old days, so we'll repeat that process. Okay, I think that's clean. Can you see that? That's the view of the tip. All right, so let's go to the next step. We're going to have to solder this to the outer casing. This is way too long, so I'm going to probably cut it a little bit. We don't need much and we want it to end up on the lower end of the case there. So let's do that first. I'll tin the wire too, so it'll make things easier. All right, so I tinned a little bit of uh, solder here on the edge of the enclosure and I'm gonna tin this wire here uh, before we try and get the, um, the wire set the way it should be. Okay, looks like that's tinned nicely now. And we'll just try and hold everything in place and uh, wire it up. So I actually just used the soldering iron to heat up the solder so, I was, so it's easier to bend it over like that. And I'll just apply a little bit more solder just to make sure we have a good connection there. Oh, my tip, tip of my soldering iron is not extremely clean here, so clean that a little bit. Okay, I think that's good. So here we see the outside soldered nicely here, and the tip has the connection. We'll do the same for uh, the other end of the wire, as well as the other length of wire, and then we'll test for continuity, making sure everything is wired properly. We don't have any issues before we continue. So I'm happy to report that all of the ends went on nicely. The others were a lot easier to do without filming while I was working on it, but I think you got the gist with the first example. The only other thing left to do is really to test for continuity, just to make sure that um, we don't have any surprises, because sometimes the braided wire could actually get caught somewhere um, where it's hard to see, and then you have um, continuity where you shouldn't. So we just want to make sure that the tips have continuity here, so we'll just touch them. The braided wire obviously will have continuity, but we don't want any continuity between the tip and the braided wire. So that's the way it should work. We're good. So that one's working nicely. We'll do the same over here. Good. There we go. Good. Everything is working as it should. One little tip I want to share with you guys. When you're working with braided wire like this and you're peeling off braided wire or cutting it off, make sure all the little bits are gone. You don't want to have any of that braided wire getting into your circuit board when you're working on this project because it could wreak havoc. And sometimes all it takes is a little 
thin piece of um, wire that you can hardly see like that right there and that's enough to you know cause a short circuit or something in your build so after you're done you, you want to make sure that you just uh, vacuum off the surface clean it very well so you don't have any issues that are hard to spot later on so I'm gonna go ahead and check off step number seven as done and now we're gonna get to the interesting stuff where we're gonna be starting to work on the boards and prepping the boards. So I'm gonna read ahead, see what there is to do, and then come back with the next steps. Here you have the eyelet board and here you have the backing board. And as you can see, the kit came with the backing board already drilled. Uh, so there's no need to follow the steps here on page 10 because it's already done. So this might be just for earlier versions that didn't have the holes already drilled. So I went ahead and checked off step number eight. So the next step is actually numbering the eyelets and holes. Um, pretty basic stuff. I really just need to number all of the eyelet holes according to the diagram shown here. So there's no need for me to videotape me doing that. That's going to be quite boring. I'll go ahead and complete that. And then the next step is going to be prep one of the grounding strips. So let's get the eyelet board all numbered up first and then we'll carry on with step number 10. Regarding numbering the eyelet boards, I went ahead and numbered them all up. I noticed a couple of things that I wanted to point out so that you guys don't get confused. Um, I numbered all of the holes according to the diagram. Now, according to the diagram, the highest number listed here is 74. However, there's another hole that's not listed on the diagram, uh, and that should technically be hole number 75, which technically ends up being here. So that's one of the holes for the mounting screws that were not originally indicated on the instructions. So what I did was I went ahead and I just put a little cross on the holes that will actually be used for the mounting screws. So number 23, and then this one, which on the diagram doesn't have a number, but technically should be number 75. All the other holes I, I marked up the way the diagram indicated, and uh, it was pretty clear. Now the same thing for the smaller board, which uses letters. So there's two additional holes here that are not shown in the diagram on the instruction booklet. So I put a little crosshair to indicate that's the, the holes that will be used for mounting. And then there's actually another hole there as well, which is uh, indicated as hole num uh, letter D, which will probably uh, be used for something else. But I just wanted to uh, point out that the diagram is doesn't exactly match what you're seeing on the eyelet boards. And that's just because I guess of the, you know, revision of the boards. So step nine, we can check as done. And we're going to move on to step number 10. And that's probably where we're going to end the video today. And step number 10 is prepping one grounding strip. So I'll get the grounding strip and we'll just wire that up. Step number 10 is quite simple. We're going to take the grounding strip here. We're going to cut off the little piece at the bottom, according to the instructions. Just snip that off with a pair of pliers. And then uh, I took about an inch worth of green wire, stripped off the insulation, passed it through the eyelet. And that's basically the wire that's going to be um, soldered to all three of the tabs here. So let's heat up the, the uh, soldering iron and uh, get that done. All right, so I'm using my trusty holder here. Makes things a whole lot easier. And we're gonna just apply a little bit of solder here, right over here. We're gonna do the same for the one on the right. And I'm just gonna bend the one in the middle slightly. It's still a little bit warm to touch, but we're gonna try bending it down a little bit. Maybe I'll just let it cool off a second. So I just bent the center one a little bit here, just so that it's easier to uh, solder 
it to the uh, the eyelet there. And there we have the finished product. Uh, everything soldered nicely on both sides and uh, that's all we really needed to do. Just snipped off the end, soldered the three lugs and we're good. So let's check off step number 10 here. I think we can call that done. That's it for today's video. 10 steps I think is more than plenty. And the next step here says get ready to build. So there you have it. I'm gonna break down this build into small, easy to digest chunks like this, which I'll be posting on my channel for you so you can follow along if you're building a project like this yourself or perhaps you've built one before and you're interested in seeing how I approach it. Now again, full disclaimer, I am not an electronic whiz. I've never built an amplifier before. This is my very first build. So by no means is what I'm showing you here the best way of doing it. I'm just following instructions uh, and hopefully we can get through it in one piece. If you've uh, built an amplifier before, specifically this kit, then please let me know in the comments below because you guys could eventually save me if I run into trouble. Uh, and this is another reason why I'm sharing these videos with you guys. So you can also follow along and see what I'm doing. And then, you know, if you see anything that is not correct, hopefully you guys can correct me in the comments. Now there's a lot of steps in this build. There's over 150, I think. So we have a lot of work to do. Uh, they estimate that the build should take about 12 hours or so. I'm not sure, I guess that depends on how quickly you work, uh, but I'm gonna be checking a lot of things twice, so it might take me a little longer, but I will definitely share all the steps with you today, uh, as well as in future videos. I'm excited, guys. I really would love to have a great sounding uh, Princeton Reverb hand-wired version, 65, based on the 65 uh, circuit. Um, I've been longing after an amplifier like that for, for a very long time, and have an opportunity to make it a reality. So I want to share it with you guys. So we'll wrap it up today. We'll leave it at that. Hopefully you guys learned one or two things and I appreciate comments. So please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments what you think about today's video. Stay tuned, subscribe, more to come.